won't really be a quiz. I want you to kind of, you can get back with your, um, hopefully your groups worked out well last time because, um, well, I mean, nobody, there wasn't blood, okay, right, on the floor and nothing like that. So um, it should be okay. Uh, because we're going to do this again. We're going to fire this up again on Wednesday. We're going to go ahead and do Chapter 20, kind of like a take-home or a, a in-class exam type thing on Chapter 20. Um, anyway, so but to, but to start the quiz, let's just do this little problem. Um, it says two wires are identical. Hold on a sec. I had this all worked out. Um, here we go. Two wires are identical. Uh, oh, before we get to the quiz, <laughs> let's do a quick review. Quick review. What have we learned so far? We've learned that um, the amperage. I find the amperage in something. What is it? Yeah, David. Yeah, difference in charge. How much charge is flowing through a certain area? Like how much charge is going through the door? In that, in how much of time? In how much time? You start thinking about weird things like this when you teach this stuff. Like when I was at the Royals game, we were all trying to get out of there going through the turnstiles. The only reason people were there until the end when I was there is because of the fireworks. Otherwise, they'd have been long gone. Um, that is the sickest excuse for professional baseball I've ever seen. Anyway, <laughs> they, they are just sorry. They should be embarrassed. They should give us our money back every time we go. Anyway. Um, Delta T over delta T. That's and how do we measure that current? What do we measure it in? Amps. 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 All right. Uh, what else did we learn? Let's see. What did we What did we say uh, resistivity was? What did we say that was? How do we measure that? A, okay, David. Uh. Resistivity times length of a cross section area. Okay, the resistivity times the length divided by the cross sectional area. And how do we measure resistivity? How's that measured? Ohms, right. Right. This is the yoga chapter. It is measured in ohms. All the resistors join the omegas. Right. Okay, now. Um, Let's see, we learned some other things too. We learned some other things too. Uh, we learned, oh, that the voltage, voltage equals what? Ohm's law, what does Ohm's law say? IR, right, voltage equals IR. So the voltage in a circuit is equal to the, um, Amps times the resistance. Okay. Um, what else did we learn? We learned that uh, uh, the power in something is equal to IV. And then we can do variations on the theme on this. We also learned that power is equal to V squared over R. And we also learned that power is equal to I squared R. Those are all things that. Those are all little shortcut things that you can use. Um, and we also learned with AC circuit, with the AC circuit, that's what it's bouncing back and forth with the frequency. Here in the United States, the frequency of that thing, of the, of the little electron in the wire bouncing back and forth, um, or the voltage changing, it happens 60 times per second. That's the uh, frequency. And we learned that the average power output is equal to the IRMS, the root mean squared, times the VRMS, root mean squared. And we learned that IRMS is equal to uh, IO, which is the maximum amperage, divided by the square root of 2. And the VRMS is equal to the maximum amperage. And when they say this is a 110, when they say that's 110 volts, they're talking about the maximum amperage, or, or voltage, voltage. Not the VRMS, or 120. So 110 or 120? 117. It's VRMS at 117. Um, but 
We'll go with V naught since there we go. V naught over square root of two. Okay, so we know all that stuff. We know all that. We, we, that's what we learned last time. That was a lot of stuff to learn. So let's take a little quiz to see what we know here. Um, let's make, make it very simple. Um, and here's the problem. Let's say I've got two wires. They are, I, this is going to be one, this will be question number one, and then at the end of the hour, we're going to have question number two when we actually talk about circuits and stuff. Okay, so this is, we have two wires are identical except that one is aluminum and one is copper. Okay, one is aluminum and one is copper. Um, the aluminum wire has a resistance of 0.2 ohms. So the R of the aluminum wire is equal to 0.2 ohms. Resistivity of aluminum is equal to, I brought this, so you would have to look it up in your book. Because some of you, I know, especially in this weather, travel light because you don't want, um, this is too hot <laughs> to carry around. And the resistivity of copper, chemistry people, is it CU? Yes. So the copper is, thanks. Okay, so I thought, is equal to 1.72 times 10 to the negative 8. Now, both these wires are identical in length and in diameter, okay, in area. And if, here's the question what is RCU? What is RCU? See if you can figure that out. Set it up so that you can get a substitution. Here's the playground we're playing in for this one. Oh, I got, I still have a Starburst left in this one. If you forgot your calculator, I've got one, or you can ask your neighbor, hey, I'm ready. I'm, I'm down to where I need to divide here.
How do we do? Good? What do we get? 0.12, right around there. Yeah, it should be right around 0.12. It took me a minute to figure this out, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, I wonder if I should get it. But what, what, what I did um, was, the way I did it, was I said, okay, um, uh, 0.2 equals rho of AL times L over A, right? Okay, and so I, since I got 0.2 over rho over AL, since it is equal to L over A. That's the way I did it. And then I said, okay, so um, the new for copper then would be um, rho of copper times do this substitution, it's L over A, but the, since L over A is the same in both of them, I can just put in this 0.2 divided by rho over AL. And then I went, oh, all I had to do was divide these two and multiply it by 0.2. That comes out to be 0.12. Good, 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 good. All right, so that one should be easy to grade. All right, now, um, let's talk about, so there's resistivity. So let's talk, let's spend about 10 minutes, 15 minutes talking about um, resistance in series. Then we're going to look at resistance in parallel. And then we're going to look at resistance in a combination of the two. And sometimes it's not in any combination whatsoever, depending on your circuit. Okay. So here we go. Let's say we got something like this. This is 12 volts. And we're just going to start getting in the habit of doing something here. All right, here's my little circuit. These little guys are in um, series. Notice they're in series here, okay? And so here's the deal. I've got R1 and R2. Okay, now, let's just, let's just talk about at a real fundamental basic level which is all I understand about circuits. Let's just talk about at a real fundamental basic level what circuits do. Here we go. Um, so this battery, boom, it's going to kick a current out. And we're going to go conventional direction. It would normally, if this is plus minus, so just get in the habit of going plus minus like this, it would normally go this way, really. In nature, it goes that way. But we, by convention, we say it goes this way. So I'm going to draw an I1. So here's what we do is, okay, so it's, it's got a potential. We've raised the potential up to 12. And then when it goes through the circuit, it's going to be back down here. And it's like it's coasting in on a sled or something. All right, pretend it's like a sled. All right, and it's going to go down a little bit of hill, then down a little bit of hill until it gets back down to zero. And then boom, it's going to get kicked back up again to be up 12. And then this will be down a hill, down a hill, to zero. And so let's take a look. So it comes around. So I've got a current that goes through here like this. I1. Put a plus and a minus like that. Just start, start getting used to messing with this stuff. They don't introduce this notation until three sections from now, but I want to do it now so you're just used to it. Now, let's look at I2. So then we draw plus, minus. In other words, what I'm saying here is there's a potential drop here. Because there's a gain here, it goes from minus to plus, so that's a gain. And it goes, it drops, and then it drops, goes plus minus, and so now it's down to zero, comes around, boom, gets kicked back up. So that's what we're looking at. Now, some of you are probably already going, oh, wait a minute. Here's the, here's the question of the day. I1 and I2, are they equal to each other? Yes. Yeah. If it's in series, there's nowhere else. In other words, charge is conserved. Is there anywhere else for those electrons to go besides in that wire? No. They're there. So 
There's nowhere else for him to go. There's no junction. There's no other wire in there for him to go taken off in a different direction. Okay. If I had something like this, which we'll get to when we get to parallel, if I had something like this, then this eye right here would be different. Okay. But I don't have that situation yet. We will have it sort shortly, but not right now. Okay. So I1 equals I2. So they're both going flowing through with I. Now, we looked at it real briefly on Friday. What does IR1 plus IR2, what does that add up to? To the voltage. What is the voltage here? 12. Okay. And I'm also going to change, so I can factor this out. I go, okay, so I times R1 plus R2. Now we know the voltage is equal to I, some IR is equal to I times that RS stands for the resistance in series. Okay? The RS stands for the resistance in series. Now, what can I divide out on that in that little algebraic expression I have here? Right, the I's. And so R1 plus R2 equals R series. So in other words, in other words, resistance in series is real simple. If they're in series, however many resistors you have, if they're in series, just add them up. Just add them up. That's all you have to do. All right? So that's not bad. That's not bad. We don't need to even do, uh, we don't really need to do a, an example of that yet. So let's move on. Let's take a look now. Let's, let's change it up a little bit. I'll leave that over there. I'll take this all down over here. Let's draw this guy. Okay, voltage. All right, now then, let's just get in the habit whenever we see voltage, we just decide, okay, we're going to have the I going this way, so I've got, a, I've got a, probably got a drop here of I1, and then probably have a drop here, plus minus of I2. Now, this is called parallel wiring. Now then, we put things in parallel wiring because um, let's say um, on this guy I've got my television set and then right here this is my washer and dryer in my house. All right, so we put it in parallel wiring because what happens if all of a sudden this wire breaks or this thing breaks? Then if it was in series, if this wire broke, what would happen if this was my washer and this was my television set? I wouldn't be able to watch either one of them. But in this case, if, I, if this is my washer, if my washer breaks or the circuit to my washer breaks, I can still watch television, okay? Speaking of which, does anybody know how Tiger's doing? Nobody? Okay. All right. So or how the U.S. Open's going. Uh, you guys must be under 45. Yes? The guy named Glover won it. What's that? The guy named Glover won it. He won it? He actually won it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was hoping it'd still be on. Oh, well, I guess. 
I'll eat lunch with my wife and we'll watch her soap opera. Okay, we'll see what Sonny's up to. And anyway. All right, so we got I1 and I2, and we'll drop it there. Um, so that's what we do here. Now, the question is, is, is the current I1 and I2, are they equal to, to each other here? Something's equal, though. And the reason we, what, who said it? Somebody said it. What's equal? Voltage. Yeah, the voltage is equal. That's huge insight. The voltage is equal. So if this is 12, then this drop here is also 12, so that I1 uh, R2 equals 12, and um, I, I, bah, that makes no sense. How about doing this? I2 R2 equals 12. Okay, and so in other words, um, so in other words, I've also got a current that's over here. We'll call it I0 for right now. Is I0 equal to I1? Careful, look at the picture. Let me put in this junction better here. Is I0 equal to I1? Do the conservation of charge? No, because he comes up here and he goes, oh, he splits off. He goes, I2 goes up that way and I1 goes off this way from I1, from I0, okay? So here's what we have. So here's what we have. We also have that I0 times the total resistance, which would be in parallel, is equal to 12. Okay, and he is equal to this IRP well I naught is equal to I1 plus I2 in this case. So I've got I1 plus I2 times RP equals uh, hold on a second oh equals I1 plus R1 plus I1 I2 plus times R2. That's not right, because this is 12 times 24. How did I do that? I'm sorry. I got, I got off on my thing again. I'm right so far. Yeah, yeah. I know how to get there. Oh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. This equals V. That equals V. So let's not panic yet. So and I1 is equal to 12 over R1. Let me change this just to 12. And I2 is just equal to 12 over R2. There we go. Thank you. So I've got 12 over R1 plus um, 12. over R2 times RP equals 12. Now I can factor the 12 out all the way around, divide this out, and I get 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 equals 1 over RP. I promised myself this semester I would not get stuck in that little derivation, but I did. Anyway, so anyway, even though I know that derivations are about as useless as hen's teeth sometimes. You just kind of want to know what's the big idea. The big idea here is that this voltage and this di potential difference here, this V and this V are the same thing as this V. Okay? And that things in parallel, things wired in parallel, have a resistance like that. Like this. And so what you have to do is you have to add up the reciprocals 
And then to find the total resistance, RP is you add up. Now, I just can't go this is equal to R1 plus R2, right? That's, that's bad algebra. You don't want to do that. So you have to do, now, an electrician will tell you, oh, you multiply over, it's add over multiply is what you're doing. Well, that's fine for two things. It doesn't work if you have three resistors. You got to do a little bit more algebra. All right, so now we understand what they look like when they're in parallel. We understand what they look like when they're in series. Let's do a combo problem. Let's do their combo problem here, which looks like this. All right, let's do this little problem here. And what you do when they're, when they're in combination is you start, when they're in combination, what you do is you start um, eliminating things that you can't, in other words, if, if you see two circuits that are in series, you just lump those together and add them together and make them one resistance. And then if you see some that are in parallel, then you do that addition real quick, okay? And then it works out. So, so we'll, we'll walk through their books um, thing here. And here's what they say. It says, figure 2024 uh, shows a circuit composed of a 2.4 volt battery and four resistors whose resistance are uh, 110, 180, 220, and 250. So I'm going to put those in. Here we go. I'm going to draw this thing. And then I'm going to show you something kind of cool before we can get started. So we can verify it. Always like having the answer before I get started. And here it's going from points A to B. All right, so we got 110 here. This is 24. So this would be, I've got an I1 going through here, plus, minus. This is uh, 180. This is 220 and 250. OK, now what they want, here's what they want. They want the voltage, they want the voltage that's going across here. Okay? I'm going to assume that it's dropping here. I'm not really sure if it is or not. So we'll have an I2 going through here. Because look what happens. Right here, we've got a juncture. I1 kicking out here, I2 coming down like this, and an I3 going this way. More than likely. So I3 is the same going through here. So where are two things in? So we'll start, we'll just say, okay, well, first of all, I got a question for you. Is 110 and 180, are they in series? Is that 110 and 180? No, they're not. Why? Yeah, because there's less amperage going through there. Right, it's a different amperage. Okay, it's a different amperage. So 110 and 180 are not in, in series. Are they in parallel? No, no, because, because these are different. Uh, it's just not going to, no, they're not. Which two are in series? Right, the 220 and 250. So we'll take, I'll just go ahead and label this as R1, this is R2, this is R3, and this is R4. And I'll say that RS. I'll just, I'll just loop 3 and 4 together, is R3 plus R4, which equals 470 ohms. Okay? Now what they want, remember what we're looking for. We're looking for the VI, uh, we're looking for the 180 times I2 is basically what we're going to look for. But we're actually going to collapse this whole circuit down to just being one resistor and one current going through there. And so we'll find 
VIV. In other words, we're going to collapse it. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to add everything together here. OK. OK. Well, do something. All right, here we go. So now, let's collapse that thing down. So I've added those together. So let's take a look at this. Now we'll draw a new circuit. Got the 110 here. Got the 180 there. 24 here. And now I'm down to 470 here. Okay? Not bad. Not bad, not bad. I'm sorry I'm not putting units on there, but one's voltage and the other two are resistors. Okay, so I still have I3, I2, and I1. And, and they avoided putting those in until we got to Kirchhoff's laws, but I'm going to go ahead and put those in right now. Because we'll get to that here in a minute anyway. All right, so now, herein lies the rub. Here's, here's an issue. <laughs> All right. Now then, I've got some parallel wiring here. I've got a question for you. Is, is the voltage drop going across here and here the same as here and here? Are they in parallel? Yeah, it is. <laughs> They're in parallel. Right. I, I, I'm with Alex. Okay, whatever you tell me. I'll believe you. Right. Sure. Okay. Um, but they are. They're, they're, in, they're in parallel. Those two would be the same. Um, let's pause right now. Let's pause right now in the, uh, in the thing so I can show you a picture. If you'll believe a picture, You may not believe the book that's telling you, but I've already got it set up. I've got the circuit set up. Okay. And I know I'm wasting a little time here, but it's kind of cool to do. And I probably should have just built it. Okay, good. Because I've got light. All right, let me turn, let me just turn this out completely. There you go. Oh boy, that high humidity, the lights out. Okay, here's the, here's the circuit that we have. Now the problem is, I'm going to have to change this voltage. I'm going to have to make this 2.4. I'm going to have to make it a, a factors of uh, 10 because the resistance doesn't go up as high as they say here. So I'm going to make this, change this resistance to, uh, um, 11, and I'm going to change this resistance to 18, and I'm going to change this resistance, well, let's just remove this one because we've already done, we've already added these guys together, so we'll just change this resistance, what do you get, 4.47, okay, 47. All right, now, so there it is. it's barely moving. It's barely, because we've got a lot of resistor in here and only 2.4 volts kicking out. All right, what's that? Now, well, if I increase it to 24, then I'm out of proportion. So I lowered this to 2.4 so that, and I lowered this to 11 instead of 100. I divided them all by 10. So it would work, okay? I just divided everything by 10. Now, the question is this. Let's do the voltmeter. Okay, let's put that there and that there. 1.3. Oh, well, I guess our answer is going to be 13 when we're done. You could just come in and build these things on some of your homework problems and you'll be fine. Okay, so it's going to be 1.3. Now, let's see for skeptical Alex there. Let's see what this is. There it is. It's the same. It's 1.3 and 1.3. Now, if you want an explanation, I don't have it. 
No, besides the fact that these two guys are in um, parallel. Okay? So in other words, in other words, what they're saying is I pretend that this guy has some wires coming down here and like a wire coming down here and there's a voltage here that's causing this voltage, well, then that would be the exact same voltage right there. Okay, so now, what do you think, what, what should be the voltage across here? Does that make sense to us? Yeah, when the total thing's 2.4, that's 1.0. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, all right. I just wanted to. I just wanted to make sure that we had that set up. So, all right. That was probably too much buck for the bang there, because now I got to put everything back, and we'll finish the problem. All right. And we already found the answer, because that's at 1.3. Multiply it by 10. We should have 13 when we're done. But let's. But let's keep whittling away here. Then we'll learn Kirchhoff's rules, and we'll take our last quiz. All right. Yeah, it is one of those days, isn't it? Okay, now, so let's take a look at this, this guy in parallel. Let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this right here and get the equal resistance in parallel. So 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 180 plus 1 over 470, okay? And the way I do that on my calculator is I do it this way. I take 1 divided by 180 plus 1 divided by 470 equals, and then what I've got right now is like 0 0.00. 768, yada, yada, yada. And then I just hit the 1 over x, the x to the negative 1 key, press enter, and I get 130. So that's, so RP is now 130 ohms. So in other words, I can replace this 470 and this 180 with just one 130 coming straight down there. Okay, and so I've got 110, 130. Okay, so now, do I have, have I gotten this down to two things in series? Yeah. Theoretically, I've got it down to two things in series. Okay, so. Take this thing, so this actually goes to this. You get 24. There's, and this would be 240. Because 110 plus 130 is 240. And so my amperage, V equals IR. So I is equal to uh, 0.1. Because this is 24 times I times 240, and so my amperage is equal to 0.1 amps, okay? So now I go back to this, um, so I go, go to here, so I go to here. Now then, my question is this, my question is this, is this I, I, I really don't expect you to get this fully, but is this I right here, with the, could I just plug it in here and multiply it by 180? In other words, is this I the same as this I here? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. I've changed all the I's. Now, and, and luckily, I can go back to my picture that I had here and show you the end result. So in other words, what I have to do is I've got to take this I and multiply it by this voltage right here. And I get um, the voltage from points A to B is equal to um, 0.1 times 130, which equals 13 volts. Whew! Let's take a look. Let me show you. Let me show you. Actually, I'm trying to, th I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if this is more detrimental. Doing, sorry, I'm thinking out loud again.
Okay, let's go back to our. Whoa! You can't see that. I forgot to lower the screen. Let's go back to that little schematic that I have here. There we go. Now remember, this is all a multiple of 10, but the amps are probably going to be about, the, or should be the same. So let's take a look at what the amp, uh, non-contact amp meter says. And notice, the, the amps there is 0.7. The amps going through the I2 there would be 0.7. The amps over here, the amperage over here is 0.1. Okay? So what do you think the amperage should be along this wire here? If this is, if it's 0.1 coming out of here and 0.7 here, what should it be here? It's 0.07 here, 0.1 here, what should it be here? 0.03, right, there you go, and it is 0.03, okay? And so if I take, now, the question is, if I take 0.0, do this. Take 0.03 and multiply it by 180. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me do it. I've, I've got you in the dark. You can't do anything. All right. Hold on. So if I take point, what? Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did we say this amperage was going through here? 0.07. If I take 0.07 times 180, boom, I get to 12 points. Say, oh, about 13 volts. It works out right. Okay. Because remember, we lost something in our RP here because we, we, we um, truncated some of it, okay? So it still works out, so it still works out fine. All right, now let's learn how to do a circuit. Let's use, do Kirchhoff's Laws because that's what you're going to do tomorrow in your, with your group. Plus, you're going to answer a few simple, dirty questions, a lot like the quiz this morning, okay? So. Yeah, it's, it's kind of coming fast and furious, I know. We're getting to that stage in the semester where you're blocking punches with your face, but that's okay. You'll be fine. You'll work together and you can do it. You'll go down swinging together. All right. This bothers me. It looks like it's going to hurt you. Okay. We're going to do all that right now. Here we go. Let's now, let's put all of our newfound knowledge together, all 14 days of it that you have. Okay. And... Here we go. What we're going to do is, we're going to do Kirchhoff's rules. I kind of gaffed over internal resistance, but just understand this. Inside a battery, there's resistance due to the chemicals and things like that. There's an internal resistance there, um, and they give a little problem on that. Um, in, in other words, in the real world, there's internal resistance and all that kind of stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the real world right now for a little while, and we're going to look at Kirchhoff's rules. And we're going to do simple two-loop circuits. And they're not, and, and simple meaning they're not three, right? Or they're not a Wheatstone bridge or something like that, which is even more difficult, right? But now, um, but you'll do a Wheatstone, have you done a Wheatstone bridge? You've already done that in class, right? Okay, so you guys are way ahead of me here. All right, so now, here's what you should have done before you went to that lab. There we go. All right. In fact, I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to take this example right here. Here's, here's the example. No? I'm going to take this example. This problem. Here's the problem. Start it over here. 
It's getting muggy. Okay, pardon my scribbling there. Oh, and this last, this one is 10 volts. Okay, here's what you do. You take a junction, it's junctions and loops. Usually for um, the number, the number of loops I have here, someone could argue, well, actually you have three loops there. Mm, no, I'm, I'm just going to go with one or with two. I've got the one on the left and the one on the right. I've got loop A and B. I'll just call these loop A and B. And the actual question, you might be going, well, what's the question? They want to find the current in the, uh, oh, Determine the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. In other words, we want to see what this drop is here in voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. So in other words, we've got to find the current that goes through here. So we've got a junction. What we're going to do is we're going to find one junction, and we're going to do the two loops. All right. Now, the junction is set up like this. I've got a junction here, and I have a junction here. Do you all see that? Where I've got wires that I don't have a junction here because does the current, is there conservation of charge says the same amount of charge is going around here as is over here, right? You all see that, that the amperage is be the same there. There's nothing bleeding it off or anything. But right here, here's the problem. I've got, I'm going to go ahead and draw my I1 coming in like this. And go ahead and put a plus minus like this too. And I'm going to draw my I2 coming down here like this. And I've got I3 coming across like this. This is the way I'm drawing it right now. When I get done, here's the key. When I get done with this problem, if I2 or I3 or I1 turns out to be negative, guess what? I had it going the wrong way. And all you got to do is flip it back the other way. And then you're fine. Okay? Okay. And, and right now you're going, well, what does that mean? Watch. Okay, so let's just take this junction A right here. At a junction, we're talking about current. Current going in equals current coming out. So at a junction, in equals out. And so for my first junction, for this junction A, and I only have to use one of them, I'm going to go, okay, well, I1 equals, well, what's coming in? Just I1. So at junction, one, junction A, I say, okay, well, I1 then equals I2 plus I3. Y'all see that? Okay. Now for my loops, A and B, I go drops, voltage drops, equal pluses, equal gains. Drops equal gains. Okay. So, so let's go around loop A. And let's go around loop B and let's look at our drops and gains. Now these are in voltage. These are in voltages. Okay? So right here, as it goes from here to here, is that right in this one, is that a plus 10 or a minus 10? Does it go, in, in other words, I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to start it now. Boom. It's a plus 10. So let's do our drops and gains here. Drops 
and gains. So for loop A, I've got a 10 volt. Now as it comes around here, remember it's like it, this is like this is like the start of the mamba. It got us to the top of the hill. We're at the top of the hill. Now we're going. Now we're coming to the first hill. Are we going to drop or are we going to gain here? Yeah, there's a, there's a voltage drop because I've already penciled it in as plus and minus. Like in other words, it follows my current. Like I said, if I draw my current the wrong way, it'll come out to be negative, and all I got to do is flip it back, and then I'll know. Oh, it should have gone this way, which could have happened. Like say this was 30 volts. This guy's going to be pushing all kinds of charge up this way. He'd probably dominate this and push it the back that way. But since he's only two, that's probably not happening. Okay. So anyway, so this is a drop. So my drop there is I want is five times I one. For convention, while you're working these problems, you go ahead and just drop the ohms thing. Okay. So it's five I R equals V, right? What I'm talking about with my drops and gains is voltage. Okay, so I'm looking at IRs and Vs. Okay, so loops, we're looking at loops, we're looking at IRs and Vs. Okay, junction, we're just looking at I. Okay, and now I come back through loop A right here. What is this? Is this a drop or a gain? Drop plus 10I2 and what about right here? This goes plus minus two. So what would this be? In other words, I'm forcing it through. So yeah, so it's going to be a drop in voltage there. Even though this is a battery, it's actually trying to push charge that way. I'm going against it. So it's direct. In other words, just look at where your plus is and minus. Right here, I go from minus to plus. So it drop. So that's a gain. Plus minus drop. Plus minus drop. Plus minus drop. So he belongs on this side. Plus 2 equals 10 volts. So I'll go ahead and clean up this equation and get 5I1 plus 10I2 equals 8 volts. Let's go to loop B. Get a loop. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. I'm thinking there's no way we can do a, a test over this on Wednesday. Are y'all, nobody has out of town plans, do they? Everybody's planning on being here Friday? Okay, so we'll just do it Friday. Is that okay? Can I, can I shift it to Friday so we've got one more day to practice this stuff? And it gets embedded before I break you up into groups and you all kill each other trying to do these? Okay. All right. If somebody, if one of you is, was like, oh, no, I, I already booked the flyer. I'm gone. Come talk to me. We'll work something out. It'll be fine. Okay. All right. Now, okay, loop B. It's not for school. You're here to, decide. you're here to learn anyway. All right, so, and that takes pressure off me, too. We'll just breathe. Now, loop B. Let's look at the, the gains and drops and beat. Let's just go ahead and start here at A. What is this right here? As we go from here to here, is that a drop or a gain? A drop. So it's drops over here. So that would be 10 I3. Hey, okay, I'm coming around here. What do I get? Oh, careful. Even though it is a battery, if I'm looping around this way, if I'm coming down this way, what am I doing here? Plus minus, I'm dropping again, right? Dropping again. Plus 5.0 volts. Now I loop around here. Like, oh, I come to here. I'm going from minus to plus. So what's that? That's a gain of 2.0 volts. Okay? And then I'm coming up here. I go from minus to plus. That's a gain too. You all see that? Because I'm going from minus to plus. So that would be a gain of 10I2. Oh my. Now, here's what we do. Here's what we do. One, 
you can go to that pet thing and build this thing and go, oh, okay, now I, and, and just put the voltmeter and the amp meter wherever you want and it'll tell you what the answers are, okay? But it's time. Do you hear that sound? It's algebra time, okay? So here we go, all right? So here's what we do. How many unknowns do I have up here? I've got an I1, an I2, an I3. I've got three. How many equations do I have? Oh, you're talking total. I thought you were talking yeah. about just the Oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. No, the total, then the whole package here. Three unknowns, one equation. So here we go. Let's set this up correctly. Let's rewrite this as I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Let's rewrite this one as 5I1 plus 10I2 um, plus 0I3 equals 8. Okay, I got my 0I3 because in this equation right here, I didn't have an I3, so I just put 0I3. Now the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract him from here and subtract him over here. So I'll have 0I1 plus 10I2 minus 10I3 equals 5 minus 2 is 3 volts. Okay. And here we go. When I don't give group tests, I tell my students, when you get to your circuit problem, if you get that far out of 10 points, you've got eight, okay? Because the rest is just, you know, Miss Crunchmeister's old algebra class, all right? But with a group test, you should be able to do it. And here we go. I'm going to show you how to solve this guy. I better write it down because I'll hide it. I'll lose it. I've got I1. I'll give you a chance to write them down to minus I2 minus I3 equals 0. 5I1 plus 10I2 plus 0I3 equals 8. And then last but not least, 0I1 plus 10I2 minus 10I3 equals, what did I say, 3? Okay. So here we go. One more time. <laughs> did it come on? Yeah. It seems to come on quicker to the... What time you turn it on? This time I'm going to leave a few of the lights on, but I'm going to go to my favorite web page now. What's that? You don't remember the question? It was a long time ago. It was ages ago. The question is this. The question is this. Um, we want to find. Um, we want to find the voltage across the five ohm resistor. So back here. We want to find the voltage across this. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now, let's do this. Let's minimize this. We're already here. Let's go to, let's do this. This is one of my favorite things to do. Let's go, go to 1728. Google. Calculator. Your web source. I love it. Um, dang it. I didn't want that one. I want algebra calculators. There we go. I want equation, algebra equations. Three unknowns. Boom. So here we go. My I's, uh, my, my ohms are my coefficients, and my I1 is going to be X, my I2 is going to be Y, and my I3 is going to be Z. This is the only way to go. 
For those of you who've never had me before, you're like, what's he doing? I'm doing algebra the easy way. So you get minus 1, because that's the coefficients of 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 0. And then we come over here, the second one was 5, 10, 0, right? 5, 10, 0, and then 8, and then 0, 10, negative 10, Oh, oh, sorry, 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 I forgot to hit my tab. Negative 10, trying to hurry. 2 or 3, 3 volts. Now, for the moment of truth, now if any of these come up negative, I had it going the wrong way. Whew. I must have done this once or twice. Okay, so what is the amperage for I2? Just throw this out. What's the I2's amperage? 0 0.475. Exactly. Quick question for you. Does, does, does I2 and I3 add up to I1? Just by quick in inspection. Yes, we are golden. This is great. This is great. This is physics, not algebra, so we can do these things. All right, so there we go. So somebody write those down. So I go back to it, the, the actual problem, which Catherine is, still wants to know what the answer is. So we'll get to it right now. And I think that first little question is enough quiz for today. I had another quiz. I was going to have you all work together and do a, do a circuit. But no, 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 no. We'll start today with that on Wednesday. But anyway, but hold on. We haven't answered the question. The question was, what is? Gosh darn it, what is the voltage going through here? Well, it's going to be V. If this voltage 1 that they're asking for going through the 5 ohms is going to be 0.65 because we found that I1 was equal to 0.65, I2 was equal to 0.475, and I3 was equal to something. Can't remember. It's whatever those two are subtracted. What? 0.175. I knew it wasn't that hard. Okay, 0.175 times 5, and it comes out to be what? It does? Yes. It comes out to be what? 3.25 volts. Okay. There we go. Easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It, there's a, it's bit, it, it's, it's, t there you go, that's what I'm after. Well, it's algebra. <laughs> it's fact, no, I love algebra, but anyway. All right, so we'll, we'll do, we'll, I'll, I'll set you up with one tomorrow to start the, the, and you can work together and stuff. That'll be your quiz tomorrow. But I'm sorry, I've, I've got to post. I can, I, I'm, I'm not going to say, blah. Okay, here you go. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. We've got to practice a little bit more. It's all about understanding. Okay, so yeah, so William's ready to go. So let's get out of here.